Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about Zipper Charms, new Tula Pink Tiny Beast Fabrics. Um, the book review this week will be for two books, uh, Paint with Thread and Modern Building Blocks. I'll be demonstrating how to decrease or increase a pattern and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me, whether you're watching live or the recording of the show later on in your week. I see Winifred's watching from Indiana, Nancy from New York, and see Danny's queuing one more up for me, I think. Uh, Kathleen from Wisconsin. So, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before I get started, just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm get, getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, you can just check that link in the description and find out more information there. So in case you missed it, I sent out a newsletter a few days ago and I just wanted to recap some of the new products that were featured um, for the June product drop, the new product drop. Um, the thing that I was most excited about were these zipper charms. Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you what they look like. And they're really cool metal uh, zipper charms. So these are, they're a little bit shiny so the camera's picking up a little bit of a glare, but they come to, to a package and they have these little lobster clasps that you can attach either to a zipper pull, um, keychain, any other decoration. If you already have a finished bag or pouch, you can go ahead and clip it on there. Perhaps you're giving one as a gift. And uh, I really love especially this little fabric only flag attached to the scissors. I know we all have our scissors that are not meant for cutting anything but fabric. Uh, these two over here, the seam ripper with the sewist little heart, some fabric cutting tools, the ruler and the rotary cutter. This one seemed to be the most popular so far, the pin cushion with the vintage sewing machine. And then there's a cutting mat uh, with a pack of needles. So there's a few other items. Let me just slide these over for just a second. So the, unfortunately, the zipper jig and the right-handed rotary cutter sold out pretty quickly. I'm never exactly sure how much product to bring on because everything just varies so wildly, but we do have more on the way uh, in case you are interested in either of these. And you can also sign up for the out of stock notification. What that is, is on the product listing, there's a little um, box uh, at the, the near the bottom of the screen and you just type your email address in and as soon as I list them back in stock, you automatically get an email um, with a link to purchase if you're interested. And then I listed these two corks. So I wanted to show you, first I'll show you the lime one right here. We had a lot of requests for another shade of green. So this is the lime and then I think this one probably looks um, even better either on camera or in, or in person. It's got a metallic gold print. It's sort of like a geometric, to me it looks like fans. Um, and then it's got a natural background and uh, I think it's really classy, especially for like a, a small clutch, something you're taking out to a nice restaurant, maybe a wedding, something like that. So those are the new corks and I had a question about these charms. Let me know in the comments um, which charms were your favorite out of the five. Danny's gonna switch back to the overhead camera so you can see them again. Just pick one of the items on each of the packets. Let me know which is your favorite. Maybe the one with the scissors, maybe the one with the vintage sewing machine. Let me know in the comments um, which one was your favorite out of out of all of these ones on my, on my sewing table. All right, so we are now entering week four of the Blazing Star bag so along. So I, I'm really excited to see each week everyone's progress. And for weeks one and two, there were over 100 entries each. So really exciting that over 100 people are sewing along. You still have time to enter your progress photo for week three. And then week four starts today. So you have until 
for week four, you have until June 13th to enter a photo of your finished bag. There's prizes and uh, it's just really exciting seeing all of the finished Blazing Star bags. Um, I did notice some people posting photographs of their finished bags in the Facebook group, said it was their first bag and or real bag. Um, I, I feel like any bag is uh, a real bag. Maybe you're not counting totes, I'm not really sure, but uh, it's really exciting to see um, a lot of first bags coming through in the photos in the Facebook group. And most exciting, Tulip Pink has a brand new fabric line that just dropped in your local quilt shop and it's called Tiny Beasts. I picked up multiple yardages of some prints um, and I wanted to share with you on camera what they look like. Such bright colors. I really love this deer print. Um, like the, I guess, tangerine-ish colored background. Here's another one. Super love the colors on this green one. And then this one is so cute. It's got little hedgehogs on it. I liked looking at these because a lot of these, not all, a lot of these are some animals that I see in my backyard, which makes me happy. This one has sort of like a, a hidden design over here. You have to look really closely to see what the actual design is. And then ladybugs, which came out in different colorways in the past, but I think the ladybugs are great for um, perhaps a lining fabric. I love these flowers. I noticed the green one also, like the colors are just so bright. I just really, really, really love the bright colors. This one makes me think of my dad because for, I think he was saying the other day, 40 years he played on a softball team called the Raccoons. So like whenever I see a raccoon, I always think of my dad's softball team. This one's my favorite print slash colorway from the line. I like the, I don't know if it's considered a mauve back, background, but just, I'm really digging the color combination of this particular print. And then here's another squirrel. A hedgehog in sort of a darker purple background. And then there's, I got three more to show you. Here's another raccoon. And then these ladybugs are super cool because it's sort of like a Roy G. Biff type of uh, scenario over here. So if you're interested in these Tiny Beast fabrics, the link is in the description and um, I don't know. I just really, every time I get a new Tula line, I'm going to fold these on my comic book boards. I always put them in rainbow order. I didn't for the show just because uh, I guess I was a little lazy earlier today, but uh, definitely they will be going on my shelf in rainbow order. And I just really love enjoying, I really love looking at my fabric bookcases downstairs, the Tula pink section, just looking at uh, each stack is generally a single fabric line and just looking at like the rainbow order of the fabrics is just really pleasing to me. So again, uh, link to this fabric line. Where can I put these? I'll just pop them on the floor for now. Uh, link is in the description in case you're interested in checking out those fabrics. So um, we did something last year and Danny and I decided to do it again this year is take a, a summer break. And just to clarify the summer break, um, couple of things it's only a break from the live shows so we're as far as i know we're not going on vacation anywhere we're still going to be shipping orders still answering emails the only difference is uh it's just a break from the live shows so i decided to make it um kind of even with the kids being off school and so uh we'll be back again um at the end of august on august 28th um i will let you know through the newsletter and on social media when we're ready to come back for the live shows again and um, I already started working on some new patterns so that's my big goal to get as many patterns designed uh, over the summer as possible and um, I saw last week I can't remember if it was Wendy or if it was someone else asking if we were going to take another summer break so yes we are um, again summer break um, break from the live shows only and we'll be returning again on August 28th so I had another question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, what are your favorite summer plans? It doesn't necessarily have to be a vacation, um, but something you just like to do every summer during the summer, maybe gardening, maybe going to the beach. Let me know in the comments uh, what your favorite summer plans are. So this week, um, since I had a little boo-boo by ordering um, two books, two copies each, so I have 
extra copies to give away of these books um, at the end of the show tonight, but I decided, decided to do the two book reviews since I have um, the two, you know, extra copies. So Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera, one's for stitching and one's for quilting. So this one is a hardcover paint with thread. It's just a beautifully laid out book. It's for stitching, hand embroidery. Um, of course, the beginning sections of the book are um, introductions to embroidery, different hand stitches, um, how to transfer your patterns. By the way, um, speaking of transferring your patterns, you can either um, make a copy and transfer it to your fabric in your preferred method or iron it onto your fabric. And in the back of the book, which should be my last bookmark over here, all of the transfers are in the back, the iron-on transfers actually, which is super cool. So um, if you'd like to copy them, you can, but you can just go ahead and iron to your, onto your fabric um, if you'd like and get straight to stitching. And I really liked, because this is a little bit different than other embroidery patterns I've seen in the past. It's sort of, I mean, I guess the title says what it is, painting with thread. It's a lot of filling in negative spaces. And so I really appreciated some other stitch guides I've seen in the past, basically just have an outline and tell you maybe different types of stitches, but I really appreciated for this book. It walks you through visually all of the steps, like what it should look like after you start filling it in. Um, and it's actually quite lengthy for all of the patterns. Um, some of them have several pages of these photographic steps for filling in all of the different sections, which um, super helpful to me since um, I've traditionally done some embroidery where you just kind of make an outline, maybe fill in a little bit with um, some stitches. But I'm going to show you all the, the projects in the book. This first one is a dandelion. And here's what I mean about all of the different um, steps um, guided by the different photographs, which I, I think is really brilliant. Also text to accompany the photographs. Next project is the sunflower. And then this really cute mushroom over here. This robin is my, my favorite. And then this bee, I, I feel like the bee is the most detailed because it has so many um, stitches in the background as well. And then there's also instructions for how to finish your project. To hang it on the wall and then like I said the transfers are all in the back so um, this is a really beautiful book and I'm not sure why I ordered two um, but lucky for you I have an extra copy to give away on the show tonight and then the second book for review tonight is Modern Building Blocks and I, I love a sampler quilt so of course I had to pick this one up right away and I really I noticed right away that there's um, in the front and back covers templates which is really fantastic and you can just store them in these little uh, folder type uh, portions in the back of the book, the front and the back of the book. So there are 40 blocks in total. Uh, according to the book, there's 15 blocks that are squares or rectangles pieced in some way. Um, blocks 27 through 35 are foundation paper piece blocks, meaning you sew it into paper and those templates are all within the book. And then there's a few blocks that are raw edge applique, so lots of uh, geometric designs, and there are several projects in the book as well. So I'm just going to show you one example of the quilt block instructions. So the instructions are in uh, English and in French. This page is the English instructions, and then there's illustrations for the block. So there's instructions for cutting what order to sew the pieces together and you can also see the order by looking at the illustrations. So all of the blocks in the book, the 40 blocks, are used in these few projects in the back of the book. So this first one's called Sweet Spot. And of course you could always uh, sub in different blocks. For example, if you didn't want any, um, for example, raw edge applique, you could sub out a different block if you wanted to. But I really like that the instructions for each of the projects are, um, they, they give you which colors to cut um, if you'd like to make your quilts the same uh, as the picture in the book. So this one's for a table runner. This is what the table runner looks like, black and white. 
Really love the text print that was mixed in with the black and white fabrics. A short project over here. This is a, a pillow, but I just really liked the examples of the geometrics in this particular pillow and all, also the solid colors. This one can be used as a wall hanging. It's a, a smaller quilt, uh, 32 inches by 32 inches. This is probably a tie for my favorite project in the book. I also like the first one that I showed you with the pastel prints, but I just really like the, I like the layout. I like that the background is sort of um, in different chunks of bright colors. And this is the cover quilt right here. So. Um, lots of fun projects to work on, lots of possibilities being that these are all um, blocks that you can sort of mix and match. And again, this one's called Modern Building Blocks. And again, I don't usually try to order two copies of the same book, but I did for both of these books today. And so these will be part of the giveaway at the end of the show. So Danny's favorite part of the show, when he's not on it, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness Squad and... We really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for the, the likes or thumbs up, um, shares and subscribes. Uh, it really means a lot to us and um, Danny and I really appreciate you so much. So uh, the demonstration for tonight is a little Hold bit... On. Oh, sorry, Danny. I didn't give you a heads up. <laughs> a quick notification as well. Okay. The links for the show tonight were for May 22nd, but I went and updated Thank the you, YouTube Danny. link. I can't do the Facebook until after the show. Okay. But back to the schedule. Okay, program. my apologies. Uh, like Danny mentioned, the the links will be corrected uh, immediately after the show. Sorry about that. Com that was my fault. So. Wait. All right. The demonstration for tonight is a little bit longer than usual, but it's a question I get just about every week. In addition to how to print out a PDF pattern, which we covered last week. This week, I wanted to talk about how to enlarge or decrease a pattern, such as if you had a family member or a customer requesting um, maybe a So Sweetness project, but they wanted it either bigger or smaller than what it is in the pattern. And so I had my friend Christina help me out. Uh, by the way, a link to Christina's website is in the comments. Christina helped me out with um, the first half of the discussion, which was how to increase or decrease by a certain percentage. I'm not a math person, and so I really appreciated Christina's guidance for the first half of the show uh, demonstration. And then the second half will be a different method, how to increase or decrease by the slash and spread method. So um, enjoy uh, Christina's uh, demonstration on printing at different percentages. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be discuss discussing how to increase or decrease pattern pieces. A lot of times, especially if you're working for a So Sweetness pattern and you'd like it to be either bigger or smaller for whatever you're using it for, um, I'm going to be showing you two different ways to do that. One is by printing using different percentages and also combining some calculations in there. And then the second method will be for um, slash and spread um, kind of ha hands-on with the pattern pieces. So today I am very grateful that Christina has joined me to discuss how to enlarge or decrease pattern pieces and I'm particularly grateful that she's joining me for this discussion because I'm not a math person and I also have to add that uh, as a designer of the pattern I've actually never use this method to change sizes of pattern pieces because I draft my pattern pieces on my computer and if I need to change them, um, such as if I need multiple sizes for a project, such as small, medium, and large, I'll just do that in the software and I really don't have to usually think about math for that process. So thank you, thank you so much, Christina. And by the way, links to Christina's social media are in the description, so you can check that out also. So. Thank you for doing this. Um, You're welcome. For Being me there, personally. An engineer who loves math has its benefits. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. And I kind of wish I paid a little bit more attention to math in school. Um, but needless to say, um, my first question for you is, how often do you enlarge or decrease um, a bag or a pouch's size? And what are the reasons that you're usually doing that for? 
Usually for me, because I have a small business, it's because of customer need. So for example, I had a customer who came to me and said, I need a backpack that is 18 inches high, this wide, and I need the gusset to be nine inches. Okay, let's go. So she picked out the base pattern that she wanted, and then I went from there to figure out the calculations. That particular pattern ended up being 147% with a nine inch gusset that was calculated separately. Interesting. Yeah. Are you doing something so usually like that for often? Me, that's what it is. Are you doing that often? Um, yes and no. It de really depends. There are times where I might have a panel that is too big for a pattern, but it's too small for the next size up. So I'm gonna go on an in-between. Uh, Brian actually made a park sling because Danny started making one and he said, I need to do this. And he's like, the big's too small, the small's too small, the big's too big, the small's too small, I need something in between. So his first pattern that he ever made was a custom size. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he's so crazy. Funny. Yeah, I was thinking that, I didn't want to say it, but. <laughs> um, is that the most common thing that you've ever resized, most uh, unique thing that you've ever resized, or if not, what is? Probably trying to figure out a, a backpack specifically. It was for D and D game stuff, okay. so she was a D and D uh, master, and that's what she needed to carry all of her stuff to her game nights. Okay. I got it. Very interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of different things that people would like to have specific carrying uses yep. for. Yeah, I can see that. Exactly. Like, I like this bag, but it's too small. Or I like this bag, but it's too big. Um, do you have uh, a bag or pouch with you, perhaps, that you can hold up that you... I do not have any handy, because um, mine generally are here, and then they're out the door. Um, gotcha. So I actually don't have any that I've increased handy. I think, actually, the next one... I don't even know what the next one I'm going to increase is. <laughs> got it. No, I've no got problem. a list of stuff that I've got to do. <laughs> we'll put a picture up sometime during this video of, um, I have an airplane bag uh, picture in mind where I have the regular size one and then also a smaller one and then a much bigger one. So we'll, we'll try to fit that picture in uh, sometime during the discussion. Um, all right, so let's get down to the actual math part of all of this. Is there a formula for... Um, enlarging or decreasing? There is. Well, there's two ways you can go at it. So you can just say, I want it to be bigger, and you can just calculate what 125% would be, or if you want smaller, start at 90%, and then you can take your original sizes and do that math. So like for the tower crossbody, it is a length of 10 by 11 and a half by one and a half. So if you math that out to, at 125%, you would take your 10 and multiply it by 1.25, which is 125%. So then your length becomes 12 and a half, your height becomes 14 and 3 eighths, and your depth is one and seven eighths. Okay. So it's not a ton bigger, but it, if you're looking to carry your iPad in it, 125% would probably work. If you want something that's a little smaller because you're making it for a toddler or whatever the case is, the math is exactly the same, but you would multiply it by zero point whatever you want to reduce it to. So 90% uh, would be 0 0.9. So you would multiply that 10 by 0 0.9, you get nine inches. So instead of your length being 10 inches, now you've shrunk that by an inch. Now the other way to figure out your final size and get your weird percentage like I had to do with my 18 inch high backpack <laughs> because I knew an actual number. So rather than sitting there and playing with percentages over and over again, you can take your, um, let me make sure I don't do this backwards. You take your original size and divide it by, let me do this math really, really quick because I think I'm gonna say this backwards. Excel decided to fail me. Okay, so you would actually take, you want the number that you want it to be, so you take your 18 and divide it by your 10. And that would get you 
your percentage that you need. So if you want it to be 18 wide and it's originally 10, then it would be 180% to get to that 18 inches wide. Okay. So can you, you would take that, your. Can you say that one more time, just for my yeah. So you take brain your desired, your desired number, okay. whichever, whether it's how wide you want it or how tall you want it. Okay. So that measurement, divide it by the original. Okay. So your customer so, wanted the 18 inch um, long bag, but height. the original height, but the yeah. original was 10 inches high. So uh, yeah, approximately somewhere around. Well, it was th that particular bag. I think was like 12 or 14, whatever it was. But so it worked out to be 147% for the tower. If they wanted 18 wide on the tower, okay, you that's, would divide 18 by 10. Head. Yep. And that's 180%. So okay. that would get you a pretty large bag. Okay. Got it. Got it. All right. Um, now, I, th I have a graphic to put on the screen, and maybe we can talk about, we're using this example of the tower crossbody bag just because it has just, it has more pieces than just a single piece, but the front and back of the bag are made using just this piece, and so I thought it, this is a free pattern also, and I thought it would be easier to talk about enlarging and decreasing this bag. Okay, so I have a graphic up on the screen that Christina prepared uh, previously, and um, we're just using the examples of uh, enlarging and decreasing. So the enlarged pattern pieces are going to be 125% for this example, and the decreased pattern pieces are going to be 90% for this example. So that's why you see in the charts 125% and 90%. So Christina, would you walk us through um, the charts on the screen and what the numbers mean? Sure. So at the top, it's like I had previously talked about what your sizes will end up being when you math. Uh, so just the breakdown of if you increase a bag to 125%, what those measurements would be. And if you decrease it to 9%, what those measurements would be. The two larger boxes on the uh, kind of in the middle, the one on the left is the raw calculations of doing that math. So for each of these percentages, to increase, I multiplied it by 1.25%, and to decrease, I multiplied it by 0.9, which matches our 125% and our 90%. But as you can see, we get some decimals that are not pretty <laughs> and not easy to translate into the rulers that we have that we deal with that are eights and eighths and quarters and thirds. It just doesn't work when you have 13.4375. <laughs> Uh, and, and this is what happens when you when you increase things. So you're going to have to do a little bit of rounding. So I also put a decimal decimal fractions conversion on the side, which has the most common fractions that we use in sewing. And you're kind of looking for the one that's going to be closest to what you have. And they generally will come together. I mean, I haven't had major problems with things coming together using rounding because it's so small that it really doesn't blow anything up or anything like that. Okay. And you're, are you always rounding up? I generally stick to the elementary school methods of rounding, you know, the, the what we learned in, in elementary school, because if it's closer to a number, you don't want it to be too big, especially when you're talking about zipper panels. A zip pocket, I'm probably not going to worry as much because it's a zip pocket like mm -hmm. it's you're probably not going to get it caught in the seams you can fold it over you're probably going to be fine with mm -hmm. any kind of zip pocket but your lining zip panels you generally want to be as close as you can okay. but when you're getting into hundreds and thousandths of an inch it's not going to make a difference okay that makes sense. Okay, so these two charts over here are the pieces in the pattern that are squares and rectangles because, as you've mentioned, you need to do some math to get those pieces either enlarged or decreased um, to your chosen percentage. But what are you doing for the pieces that you're actually printing out on your printer? So the pieces that I'm printing out on my printer, I'm opening them in Adobe, and when you go to print in your print dialog screen, there's going to be an option that says poster. And when you select that for your increased patterns, it's going to print those pieces on multiple pages that you can then piece together. Okay. 
If you're decreasing, you do not need to use poster because the pages, we already know the pieces already fit on a page at 100%. So if you're making them smaller, they're still going to fit on that piece of paper. Okay, that makes sense. Um, also... And then the other things that you do need to math are your zippers. Because if you're increasing, okay. like for again, for a zipper pocket, if you're decreasing to 90% and you use the same, I, I don't remember what size zipper it is for the tower, but it, let's call it an eight inch zipper. If you use the same eight inch zipper and you decrease, you're just gonna, you're gonna trim after you insert it, have a great day. But when you're enlarging, you need to make sure that you account for that when you cut your zipper or zipper tape, whatever it is that you choose to use. Otherwise it may not fit your hole or it may okay. not be big enough to close your bag. Okay, that makes sense. Um, one more question that I had about printing pattern pieces. You mentioned the poster, or if you're decreasing, you can just leave it the same. Are you just typing that chosen percentage in? So for example, 125%, are you just actually Correct. typing that in? Okay. Yep, it, it, so where you would normally either, for me, my printer likes it when I put my patterns on 100% rather than actual size. For whatever reason, actual size is not actually actual size with my Canon printer. Okay. So mine is always set at 100. So if I'm increasing, I do poster and then change that percentage there. And then oh. have to remember to put it back when I go to do yeah. another <laughs> That's a good tip. Pattern. And there's one more box on this um, page over here, this graphic, um, seam allowance changes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So seam allowance changes is one of those things that anybody who increases and decreases is going to have an opinion about. But the logic behind it is pretty much any pattern you buy in the United States has seam allowance included. Any indie pattern maker is going to have seam allowance included. If you increase a pattern piece to 125%, you've now added an extra 25% to the seam allowance that was allocated by that designer. Mm, okay. Now, if it is not a piece together, like with angles or like the zip, zipper opening on the cheeky type of thing, you can probably get away with using the same seam allowance. However, <laughs> I have made I have made a bag that has in, has angles from another designer uh, for a friend of mine for Christmas at a hundred and. 40% I think it was because she wanted a giant rehearsal bag. She's a theater girl okay. and I didn't change the seam allowance and I put the sides on and guess what? Stuff's not fitting together mm. because it expects the seam allowance. And once I increased it, it expected that new seam allowance. I see. The same goes for decreasing, except I never go below a quarter. Because if you go below a quarter when we're making bags and you have all of those layers, you run the risk of easily missing a layer and ending up with a hole and nobody wants that when they flip their bag. Mm -hmm. So if you are decreasing and your seam allowance is a quarter from the beginning, you may need to trim things to fit together because again, now the pattern thinks that the seam allowance is smaller so okay. your pieces are going to end up bigger than what the pattern expected. So it's the opposite. So they're going to end up too big. So you might have to do some trimming. Is it okay, especially with a small percentage change, to perhaps leave the seam allowance as it was in the pattern and just kind of, as you're pinning, maybe see how it goes to see if you need to change it? You can. And uh, like you can see on this chart, like, at 125%, if it was a 3 8 you end up with a 4 9 seam allowance, which is kind of a pain in the chookus because nobody has a thing to measure 4 9 mm -hmm. So at that point, you're just going to end up rounding that a little bit, um, which is what you can see I ended up doing on the bottom with the half. At 90%, it was also 4 9 And I'm like, all right, 4 9 is pretty close to a third. Okay. So there, like a third is easier. Let me just, does your thingy have a third? Your thingy does not have a third. Uh, I'm looking at my seam guide that is sitting oh. <laughs> right, right next to me. I'm like, does this have a third? It does not. Um, so you might have to do a little more work to be able to tape off a third if you're like me and use uh, washi tape because your machine bed doesn't have okay. a lot of... Sense. 
So probably a silly question, but how did you calculate the seam allowance changes? I just I multiplied the original by, by so 0. 0.25 times, times 1.25 1. 1. 1. 1. is okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Again, the, the, the non-math person in the room. <laughs> and what, if you are not great at math, but you can remember that you need to multiply by one point, whatever you want your increase or zero point, whatever you want your decrease and you have Excel or Google sheets, I would need to double check Google sheets, but in Excel, if you right click and hit format cell, there's an option for fraction and it will automatically convert your decimal to a fraction. It may not be a pretty fraction, but it will be a fraction. <laughs> okay, so I had another question about changing the sizes of the pieces. Which pieces do you usually leave as is? I always leave my straps the same, your zipper tabs, because the size of the width of your zipper itself does not change. Um, any D-ring, type connectors because that's dependent on the size of the hardware that you're using. If it's a backpack and it has a loop, I don't change the loop size. I might incre decide to increase the height just a little bit if it looks weird. Like if I iron it and hold it up there and it looks like itty bitty, then I might recut another one. But really that's personal preference. If you do like 147% backpack and you cut that piece at 140%, that's a really big loop. It almost ends yeah. up like a handle on a chickadee. <laughs> so those are pieces that generally you want to leave alone. Okay, well, this has been a really great education for me. I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge about changing pattern pieces with us. So thank you so much, Christina. You're welcome. Okay, I just wanted to step over to my computer and show you on my screen what Christina was talking about regarding the poster settings. So I've got my tower crossbody bag open in Adobe Reader and I'm going to open my print settings box and um, I'm just going to select one of the pages that I know has the pattern pieces. As you can see, here's the preview of my pattern piece. And here's what she was talking about the poster settings. So I'm gonna click that and it's asking for what size. And so Christina was giving an example earlier with enlarging at 125%. So I'm going to click that. And as you can see, it slices it into two portions because it's printing it at a larger uh, percentage. So then you can go ahead and hit print after that. Okay, now I'm going to talk about a second method for enlarging or decreasing. So for this example, I'm going to use my Baker Street bag pattern piece. So the Baker Street bag has a main panel, which is the front and the back of the bag, and it also has a, a panel that wraps around the sides and the bottom. So I'm going to say for this example that I want to make my main panel piece, my bag, I want it to be two inches taller. So I've got my piece printed out and an extra scrap of paper. And I'm just gonna take my ruler, making sure that I have a straight edge perpendicular to this cut on the fold edge. And I'm just gonna pick a spot. It doesn't have to be exact center. Just pick a spot to draw a horizontal line. So the reason this is called slash and spread is I'm gonna cut this piece into two separate pieces, which is the slash part. And then we're going to spread it by two inches because we want the bag to be two inches taller. So first off, I'm gonna start by just taping this piece somewhere on my scrap piece of paper. This will basically be a background for slashing my two pieces. And then because I want it to be two inches taller, I'm going to measure from where the pattern piece ends two inches higher than that and I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line straight across. So I'm going to place the second piece at this line and it needs to be matching up with this straight edge, the cut on the fold edge. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and also draw a vertical line that's even with this straight edge of the pattern piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this piece again. This section is two inches because that's what I decided I wanted my piece to be two inches higher. And I'm going to make sure that the straight side edge is aligned with the edge that I just drew and then I'm going to tape it in place. 
So once it's taped in place, sometimes you might need to do a little bit of finessing with this pattern piece. As you can see, I'm gonna place the ruler over here. As you can see, there's a difference. It's sort of, uh, it will create a jagged edge if you just leave it as is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this portion over here with the top corner to create um, a new side edge. And I'm actually going to start with this edge and there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a new side edge. Okay, so my new pattern piece, let me go ahead and just cut this edge out so you can see what it will look like. This will be my new main panel pattern piece. And my side panel piece for this particular bag is one long rectangle because it's sewn through the sides and the bottom of the bag. So to my length of the long rectangle, I'm not only adding just two inches once, I actually have to add it twice because remember this is a mirror image piece, this is only half of the piece. So we have to add two inches for this extra slice and then on the other half of the mirror image piece, we need to add an extra two inches. So two inches plus two inches equals four inches. And that's not necessarily exact. When you're pinning your piece, you might notice you maybe need to trim a little bit off, um, but this will get you very, very close to um, the side panel piece that you need. So again, this is the slash and spread method. You can use either the printing at different percentages or this method, and um, you might need to do the slash and spread for more than one pattern piece, but I started with the Baker Street bag as an example because it's just got the front uh, main panel piece for the front and back of the bag. So hopefully this helps figuring out how to increase or decrease your pattern pieces um, when you're making a bag or pouch larger or smaller. All right, so Danny's gonna put a picture up on the screen. This is from our retreats a few years ago. This is a good demonstration of decreasing and increasing a pattern. So the green bag with the squirrels is the original aeroplane bag. Go Danny's gonna put the picture up one more time. The tiny one my friend Vanessa made, that's obviously a decrease of the aeroplane bag. And Colleen made the large one with the cats. That's the increase of the pattern. So same pattern original with the increase and the decrease and um, thanks Danny. I also had um, a few other things that I wanted to cover as far as the pattern pieces. Danny could you switch to the overhead camera one more time? Thank you. All right so here's that um, maybe you could zoom out just a little bit. So here's that pattern piece that I used in the cut uh, and slash method. I did show how to make the pattern piece taller, but you can also make it wider as well if you wanted to make, say, if you wanted to make your Baker Street bag longer as well as taller. Um, if it's a pattern piece that's cut on the fold, generally you can add the width um, to the cut on the fold area. So for instance, if you wanted this to be two inches longer, because this is cut on the fold and it's a mirror image half, I would just add one inch to the cut on the fold and that would total two inches in length um, after that. So um, just remember you're doubling this. If your pattern piece does not have a cut on the fold, you can just do the cut and slash method same way that I did with this horizontal piece, but you'll instead go down the center of the piece and slash it that way and spread it however big that you want to make it. Another thing that I wanted to mention, which I've talked about in the show in the past, I always keep this little piece of double fold bias tape around. And another tip for figuring out your, say that side panel piece that I was talking about that wraps around the sides and the bottom, especially when I'm designing a pattern, I use this almost every single pattern that I design. And it doesn't just have to be uh, on a design level. You can also use it when you're enlarging or decreasing a pattern. So what I'll do, here's my pattern piece. I'll just sort of lay that double fold bias tape on the top corner and I'll kind of work it around. Again, like I mentioned before, with the increases, it gets you really close, but sometimes you need to make a little adjustment. So what I'll do, so this is, I'll take 
Obviously you can take a, a pen and mark that, but usually I just take my fingernail. And then for my side panel piece, my new side panel piece, it'll be 16 and a half times two because again, this is just um, half of the bag. And that'll give me a good close measurement for my new uh, side panel piece. Again, that's the piece that wraps around the sides and the bottom. And uh, Danny could switch back to the, the front camera because I also wanted to share with you, especially if this is your first time increasing or decreasing a pattern, um, also if you're using perhaps an expensive fabric or a fabric that can't be replaced, like a, an out of print fabric, let's say. Um, here's my little prototype that I made for the Marlin backpack. And it's kind of similar, if you're a garment sewer, you're probably very familiar with making muslins, but if you're not a garment sewer, this is basically a muslin uh, for a bag. So here's the original actual finished Marlin backpack. As you can see, it has a lot of the extra bells and whistles that my little prototype doesn't. So this is basically just the bare bones part of the backpack. And what you can do is you can sew this together. Again, I, I do have the zipper, but there's no lining inside. It's just the exterior pieces that you see. And the reason I like to use foam is because I can visually see how everything's coming together. Of course, you can use a muslin fabric if you like, but um, if you are using the foam, I recommend just sewing with a long basting stitch. For example, on my machine, I would use a four millimeter stitch to sew this together on my machine. Make sure all the pieces fit together. And then because you've used the basting stitch, it should be relatively easy to take your seam ripper and just take the pieces apart so you can still use them for your project. Um, so you're not wasting foam, but this is another good um, practice for making sure the main pieces fit together before you start working on your either enlarged or decreased project, um, just to make sure um, everything fits together like you think it will. So um, that demonstration, again, the two different methods, um, I guess we'll call it the, the math method and the non-math method, but gives you two different options for increasing and decreasing. I know for those that are um, not so fond of math, the math part might seem overwhelming. I will be posting this video tomorrow to my blog with that little uh, graphic with all the numbers and the, the charts on it so you can take a look. I think, especially if it's your first time increasing or decreasing, starting with a pattern that doesn't have a whole lot of pieces, such as that uh, Baker Street bag that I was using or even the tower crossbody bag, which I mentioned in the video was just the front and the back pieces. Starting with something with less pieces so you get more comfortable is a good way to sort of dip your toes in and get some practice in. Um, for example, working on a project with tons of pieces like the, I think I have it behind me. like the triple threat briefcase. This has a, a whole lot of pieces to it. And so I'm not saying this is uh, not doable for increases or decreases, but um, it's a good idea not to get overwhelmed. And starting with uh, a project with less pieces is, um, let's see, the camera's focusing, there we go, on something else, um, is a good way to get started. So I know there were a few questions coming through, so Danny's gonna put some of them on the screen, questions in regards to the increasing and decreasing. Teresa says, don't you have to remove the seam allowance before doing the math? So um, in the example with the uh, percentages, uh, Christina had the calculations on the chart in the bottom, I think it was on the bottom right hand corner of the chart. Um, so you can, I spoke to a few friends about printing at different percentages. Some of them left the seam allowance as is and did not change it. Um, but Christina mentioned that um, she's tried to do that in the past and depending on the pattern and depending on how, on how the pieces fit together, um, sometimes um, it's helpful to increase or decrease the seam allowance also by the same percentages. Jamie says, can you just change the printing, printing settings to the larger or smaller percentage? You can, the issue with that is um, in my patterns, uh, pattern pieces are not present for all of the pieces such as the squares and the rectangles. So while it is useful to just go ahead and go into your printer settings to print your actual pieces at different percentage, that leaves you with uh, either the math for the squares or rectangles, or you can hand draw and scan into your printer if you have that capability 
the squares and the rectangles, save them, and then reprint them at a different percentage. So that's another option as well. Elizabeth says, are you sharing the spreadsheets? Yes, I will have that uh, posted tomorrow on the blog. The spreadsheets, uh, as well as the standalone video and the video, Danny's going to edit it out. So it includes these uh, follow-up questions as well, um, because I think some of these would be helpful to others too. Diane says, I see a notation at the bottom of your sheet regarding seam allowances. How do I ensure when reducing there is sufficient seam allowance? So um, Christina recommended even when you're decreasing not to go below a quarter of an inch seam allowance, even if the percentage has changed to tell you otherwise, just because, and I agree with this, sewing anything smaller than a quarter of an inch seam allowance leaves you open to um, perhaps missing layers when you're sewing things together, um, perhaps having a, um, holes in part of your seam. And so I, I would stick with quarter of an inch being the smallest seam allowance, um, even when you're reduce, reducing. Sarah says, if poster increases the size for you, why do the math unless I misunderstood poster? So um, that's correct. Uh, when you're, like I mentioned, when you're printing the pattern pieces, it only covers, at least in my patterns, um, the pieces that um, are represented by actual pattern pieces, not the squares or rectangles. Um, another option, and I don't know what the possibility of this is at your local um, printer copy shop if they have different sized papers, but for some of the new patterns, um, we do have pattern pieces for AO pages, which is large format copy shop pages. Um, depending on what is offered at your local copy shop, perhaps they could um, get that printed for you at um, smaller or larger percentages, might need to be poster size still, but that's another option. I haven't investigated that, but um, something to keep in mind as well. Michelle says, this method only enlarges one direction, right? So um, you can, Danny, could you switch back to the overhead camera? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you can use the slash and spread um, either way. It can either go um, horizontally, it can go vertically, or it can be both. So if you're doing both, you'll just do one at a time. So you'll do um, perhaps horizontal first, and then if you are using, using the slash and spread for a vertical, then you'll do that one second. Um, also, like I mentioned, if it's a cut on the fold situation, you can just add half of your increase to the cut on the fold. So for a two inch increase, I would just add one inch. Uh, my paper's not quite big enough for the whole piece, but it would just be this um, extra section over here. Thank you, Danny. Were there any other questions about the increase or decrease? Thank you. Rob says, I did the slash and spread on a cavalcade bag that required adjustments to a bunch of pieces. I cut all the pieces out in paper, then taped them together. Doing the paper mock-up saved me. And I think someone emailed me a couple weeks ago also that she used her, um, modified paper pieces to actually sort of, instead of pinning fabric, which you would pin a side panel piece, what she actually did was she taped her new paper side panel to the piece so she could see how it fit together. I know it's a little bit fiddly with the paper because the paper doesn't bend through the curve quite like the fabric does, but that's another option just so you can sort of see how the pieces will fit together if you have um, a lot of excess in the side panel or maybe you have not enough. Threads by Ellie says, with this method, it may be helpful to make registration marks on the original pattern prior to cutting apart. Then when you cut your other pieces, they will still match up. Yeah, that makes sense also, the registration marks. Um, since you're working from PDF pattern most likely, um, it's always easy to make extra copies. But if you're working for the from an original type of actual physical paper pattern that you bought from a quilt shop, you want to trace that off before you do any um, changes to the pieces so you can still save your original pieces. Carol says, what about using the proportion scale wheel? That wheel, which is, the name's escaping me right now, it's a little uh, cardboard wheel that I demonstrated on a previous show. I recommended it to someone a couple months ago via email and um, they let me know that it was no longer available online. So I'm not sure if that was temporary or permanent, but that little wheel, I think it's the Quilters 
proportion scale possibly. Um, that wheel is super helpful, but um, I kind of skipped talking about it in this demonstration just because when I found out um, it wasn't readily available, I kind of didn't want to go down that rabbit hole of suggesting it and then people weren't able to find it or buy it. Um, Diolinda says, are these patterns giving allowance for the seams and what does one sew a half inch or a quarter inch in like in quilting? Um, that, I'm not sure what the question was. Um, feel free to email me after the show and I, I'm happy to answer and or clarify. Um, Kathy says, um, Sarah, teacher, you may be taking a break, but in true fashion of a teacher, you are giving us lots of homework. We love our teacher and Danny too. Yeah, I, I know, especially the math person, the math portion was a bit heady. And for me too, especially as someone who's never used that, uh, printing at different percentages and calculating um, just because I designed the patterns uh, as I wish in the software. Um, but it is useful to keep in mind because I think especially there's lots of situations where we can possibly have the need to increase or decrease and it's good to have options. So you have either the math option or the slash and spread, which um, you can also use the slash and spread for your rectangles if you like. Um, not necessary, but it is helpful for at least the pattern pieces that are not a square or rectangle. Um, Danny mentioned uh, sorry, before I get to that, were there any more questions about the, mm -hmm. okay. Um, well, um, thanks for listening to that, uh, lengthy demonstration. Um, hopefully it's useful for you in the future for increasing or decreasing. Uh, Danny mentioned there were some questions about, uh, the summer break, and I think I did not make myself, uh, clear. Maybe I didn't use the right words, but, uh, today's the last show before the summer break. Yeah, Jody Ann uh, was asking, when does it start? So today's the last show um, until August 28th. So we'll be taking a, a break uh, starting after the show ends. Um, effective immediately. Effective immediately, as Danny says. Thank you. <laughs> do you want to do other questions? Or do, you um, do you have a lot of other questions in your queue? Nope. All right. Well, I guess... We'll get over to the giveaway, which the giveaway prize was those two books that I um, reviewed earlier, um, Paint with Thread and Modern Building Blocks. And actually I decided to, normally I give uh, a week to enter the giveaways, but since we're taking a break and not coming back till August 28th, I didn't want to risk um, not being able to announce the winner on the show. So I decided just for today's show, it'll be a live winner for the two books. If that's okay, Danny. So if you want to give me some numbers to, to choose from for the, the live giveaway. One through 79. Um, how about 43? And one through 20. Uh, number seven. The winner is Elisat Bolesta. So congratulations to Elisat. Congratulations. LSS. Uh, please email me after the show so that I can get you connected with your prize, the two books. Um, congratulations and thanks for watching. And well, I just wanted to say I really appreciate all of you so much. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great summer um, and we'll see you back uh, for Social Sunday on August 28th. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody. Bye. I'm back for a quick second. Danny reminded me that I didn't announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Um, it was Soap and Girl, so I just wanted to record that on the show. Soap and Girl, congratulations, and uh, please email me after the show. Bye, everybody.